be talking a little bit about what we chose. So we chose to do a myelectric prosthetic hand as our solution to Naya's problem. So what we'll be doing is instead of having three finger digits, we'll have the two front digits be moving as one to basically simplify how many moving parts there would be, avoid pinching. We'll be using four motors controlling each finger individually and a thumb that will be able to move in multiple different settings. Now, the sensors we'll be using are referred to as myelectric, and what those are is they will be attached to her muscles, and when she moves her arm, it'll send an electrical impulse that will power the motors. And I'm going to move on to Abdul. Hi, my name is Abdul, and I'm talking about why we choose the prosthetic. We had sessions where we met and brainstormed different ideas and designed that would enable her to play the recorder, but we wanted to design something that went beyond this. Uh, however, like rather than limiting our design to just playing the recorder, we wanted to design something that could um, like help her in different areas of her life. So with this design, Nia will be able uh, to use it all day instead of just the uh, music class. And this design will should improve like different aspects of her life also. And also the amount of hours will like put into this project will feel more rewarding for the, this design. And now Matt is talking about expectations. I will talk about our expectations for this project and instead of having fine motor control, we're gonna have different set positions to play certain notes and then another setting for everyday positions so she can use it to pick things up and pinch and grab. The lifespan of this will probably be two to three years, and that all depends on when she outgrows it and how long all the mild electric sensors will last. And we don't expect her to be able to use it all the time, or for a long period of time, and she won't be able to move the fingers individually, it'll all be preset positions, and it won't be able to be 100% water resistant because we'll need a microcontroller to control all the sensors. I'll be, and Hillary will be talking about progress so far. My name is Hillary Carter, and uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about where we've gone so far with this design. Uh, and, I mean, as you can tell, it's been a lot of work so far. Um, so far we've been in contact with several professional engineers that know a lot more about uh, different sensors and programming um, and next semester we'll do a lot more picking their brain trying to get the best functionality out of this hand. Uh, we've also done a lot of research on existing prosthetic hand design uh, because there's a lot of information that can be gleaned on you know, the motors that, they've, that have been selected, um, gear ratios, uh, you know, different kinematic designs, stuff like that. And that's been really, really helpful in the design of this because, as you can imagine, you know, when we first decided to do this, we were a little bit overwhelmed, but once we did a little more research, we realized that, you know, there's a lot of help out there for us. Um, <clears throat> so far we've been putting a lot of effort into the mechanical model of the hand, and we have that uh, pretty much squared away. Uh, we decided that the four finger digits uh, are going to be identical, um, unlike a human hand where they're different length. We're just going to make four identical fingers. And then the thumb, as Taylor was explaining, is going to be opposable but not motorized. So she will be able to position it herself so she could use it for, like, say, gripping a spoon or holding a ball or something. Um, but she will have to move it with her hand. Um, so because we have the mechanical design pretty much squared away, we've been able to make a materials list and a parts list uh, for the design. And we try to use as many standard parts as possible to make the manufacture of it uh, as easy as possible. Um, we've you know, downloaded a lot of models from McMaster and such uh, within the design. And we have the motors and the gears selected. Uh, so at this point, we're kind of waiting. Next semester, we're going to start right out with ordering parts and trying to get it built as soon as possible. Uh, because we've got a lot more ahead of us than just the design of it. Uh, and I'm going to pass it off to Sean, who will talk more about what we have coming up. 
Alright, so like Hillary said, we have a lot of mechanics and uh, kinematics and everything, all that's figured out. Um, the biggest thing that we have to tackle next semester is a big portion of it, which is the control system. Um, we've researched a lot of different options that are available to us as far as how this is going to be specifically controlled and different individual components of that aspect, but we haven't narrowed down what we're actually going to select and use in our design. And so what goes along with that is the actual housing that's going to house all the different components in the fingers. That's still sort of up in the air as far as it might need to be um, be rethought and reworked as far as where the different individual components of the control system are going to be located. And um, so that's going to be a big part of next semester and that's going to require a lot of time. Another thing that we're going to have to figure out is um, the whole sensory system. Because with, especially with myoelectric sensory systems, they're not a one-size-fits-all type deal. And so we're going to have to have a lot of meetings with NIA and figure out what configuration and what type of sensors work with her specifically and what's going to work for her needs. And so um, basically the control system and the sensory system is going to be big portion of next semester and um, it's going to take a lot of time and work to tackle. Um, the kinematics and, like, and everything like that are with a big portion of this semester and next semester we basically just have the control system. And now I'm going to pass out to Dan who's going to talk about some more of the obstacles we're going to face next semester. Hi, I'm Dan. Um, we are definitely going to have some obstacles next semester, but um, the biggest ones are going to be basically money in our budget, like if we can get materials donated or time donated or machine donated or something like that, that will drastically cut down the amount of money we need to raise. Um, our <coughs> estimate on how much it's going to cost is probably like one to three thousand dollars, which isn't too expensive for a prosthetic. Usually they can cost ten to fifty thousand dollars for just a hand prosthetic. Um, one obstacle we have been facing and will probably continue to face is um, like basically setting up meetings to um, calibrate all the sensors and get definite measurements from NIA. And um, like if we can't do that, we're just going to have to design it for someone else, basically. And but hopefully we'll be able to get in touch with her soon. Get that all squared away because the programming it sounds pretty hard it might be a little easier than we're making it out to be but it's definitely going to take some time and uh, now Jacques going to talk about how we're going to try to overcome these obstacles so yeah like Dan said we're going to uh, as far as money and budget goes we're going to see if we can't go around um, little shops around the area I guess and get basically or mostly material donations. Uh, each finger, like Taylor said, each finger has a motor, uh, a few gears on it, um, so maybe that's something that we could get donated yet. Um, that's something that we're going to be working on over break. And then uh, programming sensors. We have a few PEs right now that are uh, they're mechanical engineers based. And we're going to look to get an electrical engineer PE on, uh, on board just to um, help us out with it, seeing as how they're probably a lot more knowledgeable than uh, most mechanical engineers with that stuff. And now that we got um, positive mold in Mia's arm, it's going to be a lot easier to uh, start brainstorming um, ideas to attach the prosthetic to our hand. Not you want to um, some, somehow put a shoulder strap on, or just basically uh, just put a half halfway up your arm. Uh, it's still up in here. But uh, next we have a few pictures of what we have done so far. Um, that's basically our our, our design so far. Um, all the fingers are pretty much all the same. Um, so I guess what happens in a nutshell is here's the motor right here, which turns this worm gear, and um, this gear right here is connected to this uh, portion of the finger, I guess. And internally, there's a linkage. If you want to go forward to the mock-up, one more. This is the linkage um, we're talking about that sits inside. Back on. So the motor. It connects right here uh, through this pin. So this portion of the finger moves linearly with that gear, 
because uh, the whole assembly is pressed together with a keyway. Um, so when the, mo the gear rotates, this part of the finger moves, and this linkage moves this part of the finger linearly with it. Uh, so they move at about the same angle, um, and full linear motion goes from straight to 90 degree bends in both joints. What what's the learning curve when you for people when they once you have the sensors attached to actually be able to control you know the prosthetic? That's kind of one of the hurdles we're trying to get over right now is uh, we're having a hard time getting in contact with Naya, uh, and that's going to be one of the issues next semester is setting up meetings with her because once we have uh, everything, once we have the mechanical part of it designed, we're going to have to set up meetings you know, to calibrate the sensors to her. And then once it's calibrated, um, Dan has talked to a couple of... Yeah, basically, it's going to take as long as she, like, wants it to pretty much. If she practices all day with it, it'll be quicker. If she uses it for, like, five minutes a day, it's going to take a long time. It's kind of like a practice makes perfect type thing. Like, she's not, we're not just going to slide it on and she's going to be, like, playing the piano. She's going to, like, we're going to slide it on, it's going to be super awkward, but then once she, like, she doesn't really know how these digits respond to, like, her tendons and stuff, so she probably doesn't have, like, really fine control of that stuff yet, but once she starts practicing and, like, seeing, like, I move like that and that finger moves, then she'll have a lot more control over it. Once she starts to figure it out, she, just has, to, a lot she has to get like comfortable with it, basically. Yeah. So, uh, what materials do you guys think we're really using for the fingers? Like, was it metal or plastic? Right now, we're looking into aluminum fingers and potentially a composite type covering. This, yeah, the three materials we have right now is, um, I mean, some of the pins are steel and like, really, really small. Uh, right now, it's Delrin aluminum and um, and hopefully a carbon fiber case for the whole thing. Because that was another one of the issues is trying to make this as light as possible. Because she's, I mean, we've all seen her; she's tiny, so <laughs> we don't want to make this, you know, really heavy for her. So. Well, are you going to use her like the fingertips to like seal the holes off? We've been looking into a neoprene sealing, basically, to either slide over fingertip or to coat it completely. How are the sensors actually attached to Naya? Uh, have you ever seen like the EKG, like the studies where? Oh yeah. Yeah, you just like the adhesive on, and um, there's like a metal uh, conductor type thing, and so it uh, it basically just like reads the impulses and stuff, and. That is what will move the motor through the microcontroller. Is this something that she can apply herself, or she'll need assistance in the future? Uh, she should be able to apply it herself. The whole sensory system is still somewhat up in the air. We're going to have to set up a few meetings tonight to actually figure out what's going to work specifically for our situation. So, I mean, that's <coughs> what we're going to have to tackle next semester. Did you find, like, when you said you were talking about gears and kind of ratios of that, does that mean like kind of dexterity being able to like switch through the different notes because it's obviously going to be like a normal hand playing. Um, so like, do you just make all the gears the same and then just like have them be a pretty quick like acting or is that just still something we need to work out for us how to clamp down? Well, that, the gears we chose were looking just so that we can get them moving. Mm -hmm. And then it might ahead. take fine tuning <laughs> yeah. down the road in order to get the precise as quickly as you want it to. Gotcha. Okay. But we hit kind of the middle of the road. This will work. What kind of battery life are we talking here? You said making it as light as possible. I'm thinking you're just going to carry around a 12 volt. No, uh, I think I read it was. Uh, <coughs> can't remember the number. Was it 1.3 amp hour? I think it was like a one and a half volt battery. It doesn't take too much to power it. Um, 
since she's never had fingers and never developed those muscles, is there any concern that centers don't have anything to pick up on? Or a little bit, yeah, because her her arms definitely atrophy, like just because. Yeah, but I mean, we could. You can place them all over. You can put them on her bicep, tricep. Some people put them on their lats. Some people, basically, wherever they can read an impulse that and is along the same line, they can put a sensor on. That's all about what muscles would be easiest for her to train to be yeah. able to use as bicep. So. And you won't have a bunch of cords if they're on your forearm. So she's all the way down. She's gonna have to train her body how to move her fingers that she doesn't correct to run the game. A little bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's gonna have to be the last question. Thank you.